Uh, Agnes, so as usual, every Thursday we bring you another exciting episode of Tech Talk. Uh, for you to get to know all that we've done before, you can go to YouTube, look for Tech Talk with Diego on YouTube, Tech Talk with Diego. Watch all the episodes we've done before and of course subscribe and then share and send us your comments and views about it and we'll be able to also address anything else you want us to do. Plus, you want to be part of this segment also, okay. make sure you send us an email to questerhestat at gmail.com, questerhestat at gmail.com and then let us know what you are into in the world of technology and we'll have you on board. So, uh, last two weeks he was here, we talked about BEC, uh, Basic Email Compromise, uh, not the one you write as in junior students, junior high school people, right? And uh, it was a very exciting conversation we had, how to take care of your email and not uh, be attacked in any way. Today, is back again, we're talking today about SIM swap fraud. All right, so two weeks ago, or some few weeks ago, the Ministry of Information, led by the SLOs to the minister, uh, had a press, made a press conference and they discussed the issues, among others, that effective January 1 to June 2000, 2020, rather, everybody's supposed to go and re-register your SIM. For what reason are they asking? Maybe Sheriff will tell us more. So Sheriff has joined us again. Sheriff Isa, nice to meet you. Thank okay, you. so Sheriff Isa is information and cybersecurity consultant with Jewels Limited, and of course, Jewels. a member of the IIPGH. Okay, so he's back again, and we're going to talk about when you talk about cybersecurity, there, he's a guru. Uh, some Apparently, he had a student here who works here also, and he was lashing here once upon a time. But anyway, um, once again, I'm, I'm impressed you, to have you. But just that the height, people are complaining about height. But when I grow, Sorry. when I grow up, I also grow tall. Sure, All sure, right. sure. Okay, so today we're talking about SIM swap fraud. What exactly is it? Okay, when we talk of SIM swap fraud, um, some, I mean, some also call it SIM hijacking. Okay. Okay. We say SIM swap fraud. Basically, an imposter is trying to deceive your telco. I mean where we say telecommunication company, okay. MTN, Vodafone, mm -hmm. Airtel mentioned yeah. there, trying to deceive the telcos into reassigning your SIM card, what we call the chip, okay. uh -huh, your SIM card to that, that um, user or the fraudster, okay. uh, basically that. And okay. the, the main motive is for financial purpose, just so to once again, benefit yeah, financial. The, the CEOs, the big bosses and all to that. To some because, extent, to okay. some extent, but mm -hmm. we are all, I mean, that's right. Liable, yes, yes. Okay, yes, you never know the are information they are getting exactly, from you. Exactly. All right. So, um, what are the forms that we are talking about? What are the forms that they come in? This sim uh, fraud. Hijacking? Okay. Basically, um, I would like to. They, they come in three forms. Okay. Basically. Okay. But I will use um, the diagram. We, I mean, a okay. diagram. Okay. All right. So let's that. let's let's. This is the diagram. So if okay. you can take us through from okay. one to the number five. Okay. Let me give it. Background to this diagram. Okay, all right. You know, um, internet banking. Mm -hmm. When you want to access your internet banking, I mean, via online on the website, mm -hmm. the bank, in order to secure you, they are what we call the 2FA, se second two factor, FAs. 2FA, okay. second factor authentication. Okay. With that, you don't only need your user ID and password, okay. that to ensure your security, mm -hmm. There's an, another form of authentication so okay. that no one would just get your username and password and okay. access your account. Okay. So your phone number becomes your second level of authentication. Okay. So once you enter your username, mm -hmm. password, mm -hmm. then it sends a code to your phone okay. to, 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 to re-enter. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, the froster mm -hmm. wants to get access to your account. Okay. He doesn't have your phone number. Mm -hmm. So maybe he has tried to get all the credentials, all the mm -hmm. information you yeah. need but now it's needs your phone number, number okay. to get the code. Mm -hmm. He can't access and call you to give the code to him. You okay. know, it wouldn't work. So you have to devise ways and means of getting the code to access the platform, basically mm -hmm. that. And how does he do that? Okay, so firstly, Thank the you. first obtains um, your details, your PIS. When mm -hmm. I say PIS, personally, personally identify information, information like username, mm -hmm. password, date of birth, mm -hmm. lot of information yeah. about you. Yeah. Once he obtains that information, mm -hmm. it goes to the second step of manipulating the telco to do a SIM swap fraud. You may think, oh, it's weird, how can he manipulate the telco? Exactly. The guy has already collected enough information from you in stage one. Mm -hmm. So he can use that sometimes, fake ID, the okay. fake ID for that. Okay. Or they might have an insider, mind okay. you, insider yeah. in the yeah. telco. Yeah, we've heard that a couple of times. Good, that, good. Yeah, that happens. Or it will, I mean, Influence them financially, it happens. Oh, okay. To okay. reassign the SIM. Okay. And no, it's a okay. project, so the SIM mm -hmm. wouldn't be used for, I wouldn't say even more than an hour. Okay. Depending on the type of project they, okay. are, they are undertaking. 
Then there are so, three. So before, before we move on to the third one, so haven't had your PIIs already, mm -hmm. all he does is just, if you're a telco, I call you, okay, my name is William Diego Pakabeni and I work with Crystal TV. And c can you help me? What, what information is he asking? Okay, basically, you know, nowadays you, you have to go face to face and you, you have to enter their mm -hmm. customer office to okay. do that. So, so basically they go face to face. Unless it's an insider dealing, that one, a call alone can it suffice. Can yes. <laughs> but if it's face to face, they okay. will try to convince you that okay. I've misplaced my phone, blah, blah, blah. And they will tell you big things to believe and uh, maybe lured into getting the same for them. I see. Interesting. All right, let's move on to the third. Okay, so that step three the cluster uses your details mm. to log on. The details you obtain from stage one, one stage two. Yes, yes. Okay. Then log, log on onto the platform. Mm -hmm. Then the OTP is sent to the person. So we okay. first logging on, mm -hmm. then the bank for the stage four, the bank mm -hmm. will send the SMS OTP. The OTP okay. is what we call the one-time password. Exactly. That's the second level of exactly. authentication yeah. I, I discussed. Yeah. 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 So it gets into, the bank will send SMS OTP mm -hmm. to the phone number. Okay. Then the froster will use the phone number in stage five mm -hmm. to effect transaction. Wow. So what I've explained, it's not only in the realm of internet banking, mm. but in cryptocurrency too, it happens. Okay. Bitcoins, mm. it's the same cycle goes. Okay. There's also another form, the third form, which is usually what we call the um, sim, uh, sorry, check cloning. Okay. Someone check cloning. Might, yes. Okay. Might clone your checkbook or steal your checkbook. Then. In other words, a replica of what you have. Exactly that. Then issue instruction on the checkbook. I mean, issue instruction on the checkbook. Mm and send it to the bank. Okay. You know, when the amount is that huge, I think that there's a cap on it, the bankers would have to call to verify exactly. from the owner, owner the, original owner, owner. Yes. yes. Now, the owner's SIM has been swapped yeah. to someone in the syndicate, exactly. you understand? Exactly. So it's the same syndicate who approve for the check to, exactly. be, yeah, to be executed. To, wow. All right, so on that note, mm -hmm. we now want to ask, how would you know mm -hmm. that your SIM has been compromised? Firstly, you lose signal. Okay. What we call a reception. In, in the award, part of our award, the <laughs> telcos that, are, that's, that's you always lose signals that, all the time. So, so, <laughs> so, of course, it's something to, okay, I mean, trigger your mind. Yeah, exactly. That okay. once you lose reception, mm. your same might be, there's a possibility, there's no okay. way the case. For, but is it for just a brief period or longer, three no, days, I, five days? No. Or this, just a few this, hours? This, uh, this uh, project, mm -hmm. five, ten minutes should be enough for the froster to execute whatever. Transfer money online. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't take you yeah. ten, more than 10 minutes. Okay. So it's very brief. So mm -hmm. if you are not careful, you wouldn't notice that. Wow. Very brief. I mean, we take things for granted here yeah. in Ghana because when my SIM goes off, <laughs> I don't really think, that, okay, I will be complaining, maybe you write on Twitter, Instagram, that, oh, this people, they are that, 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 that kind of thing. But your mind wouldn't probably go on exactly. to it. That, that's yeah, what is happening. That's also a possibility. Okay. Mm -hmm. And secondly, yeah. you wouldn't be able to make or receive call or test messages. That's also another okay. way. Okay. Just to draw your attention that there's a possibility of your SIM being swapped. Mm. Once again, the, it begs the question, uh, maybe I'm not a person who receives calls all the time. I don't get text messages ah. all the time. So I might be thinking that, okay, it's normal. I mean, you could be there at times in the whole day and you never even get a call. You don't even feel like making calls or something like that. So exactly. then again, you might not be, um, I don't know how, then for us here in Ghana, there are a lot of the SIM fraud things you know, going around. To, to, some, to be honest with you, it's very difficult to detect. Very mm. difficult to detect. Okay. But once we are aware, at least we'll be mm -hmm. on the lookout for okay. all, all these things. All right. Yeah. So, having known um, the ways by which you could identify that mm. this is what is happening, so now let's look at how do you prevent it yourself? Okay. First thing, please never buy an already registered SIM. Mm. What do you think someone will use as details to register a SIM and sell it? There are risks involved. Are there people still doing that? They do. They do. Let's go to circle right now. Tip to lane. We get a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once See. a person has registered a sin, okay. there are risks around. The mm -hmm. person has weighed their risk and the mm -hmm. benefit and decide that, okay, the benefit outweigh their risk. So let's go. Okay. Sin swapping may be one of the motivation of this guy. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very, very careful. Okay. The second thing is we can have second same card, mm -hmm. especially for authentication, okay. second level authentication, mm -hmm. so that the, your usual SIM card you use to call your friends, family, to post online. Mm -hmm. You don't use that phone number for your second level authentication. Okay. So that wouldn't be that okay. exposed. Exactly. To the world. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the third one is be 
careful of social engineering. In stage one, mm -hmm. the guys, the major tool they use is social, social media. Engineering. Okay, so they got into the social media, look Just for information. Just deceive you, social engineering, deceiving you, whether by calling you on phone, sending you email, or face-to-face, -face, being friend with you, to get sensitive information from, from you in order to perpetuate this fraud. And thirdly, beware of what you post online. <laughs> beware of what you okay. post online. You have to what, be very, what, what can't you post? I mean, I mean, um, on the average, maybe you post your pictures mm -hmm. and uh, what else apart from pictures? You know, pictures, yeah, one side, but what you share in terms of, let's go on LinkedIn right now. Okay. You see somebody's history <laughs> <laughs> from KG to where it's working okay, now. Okay, okay. So, but LinkedIn also advises that you do that. They update is for for the purpose of job sure, uh, secu sure, sure, security, sure, sure. Uh, getting a job. So mm -hmm. when the, when for instance an employee sees that okay, these are his credentials, it's automatic for you to be probably coding. So then, if we are here talking about the fact okay. that you don't list all those things there, okay. then I, I don't you think you're shooting yourself in the foot? Okay, fine. In fact, LinkedIn, mm -hmm. uh, I would say I'm, I'm a testimony of LinkedIn. Let me put this okay. way. But. For the fact that we are posting our details on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. we should be cautious. We should have in mind that there's a possibility of someone chancing on that information mm -hmm. and using it against us. In okay. fact, I'm not condemning LinkedIn. Okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. I'm on LinkedIn, okay. and uh, it's, it's very super bad. We yeah. have to be very cautious okay. of information. Not only on LinkedIn, but social media in particular. Okay. Our comments. Okay. I'm here. You post where you stay, phone numbers. Take a lot of pictures. Literally, yeah. literally, they ask you when you're posting pictures, they ask of your location, you want exactly. to add your location and all those kind of things. Me, for me, I avoid even putting about the location and all that, but I think that is a very credible thing. All right, so what how, um, what do you do if you feel you're a victim? What, what are you supposed to do? What's the first thing to do? Immediately contact your telco, mm -hmm. whether with an empty and edit to go mention them. Okay. Then two, alert your bank. Because okay. as I mentioned, the major motivation is for money mm -hmm. but let me add some information are more expensive i mean are priceless let me mm -hmm. put it this way okay. some also do that for information mm -hmm. so once you alert your bank then thirdly you have to change the usernames and passwords of all your critical accounts okay because they might have been compromised okay then fourthly or finally you report to the police okay Hmm. Yeah. In our police, in reporting such cases to police, you well, and you I know, know how long you know, it takes. Reporting take. is very okay. good. You know, All in right. this month, uh, the Ministry of Information, mm -hmm. sorry, Ministry of Communication, yeah. um, announced that the what we call cyber security and incident report mm -hmm. in the. POC, the okay. reporting contact, okay. where we all have to report incident. It's okay. good to report incident okay. so that others can learn all the logistics and logistics needed to counter. I mean, act all these mm. actions, they, they can be done. Okay, very, so very, in very the cases where, um, I mean, you said that these people are able to work within five to ten minutes. Yes. In cases you are, where you realize it has already been done, what do you do? Still, you need to, you need do, to go through you need all that process. Go, through go process. report to the yeah. police, call your bank, call, yeah, after, uh, call the telco and all bank. that. Yes, okay. exactly. Because okay. it's key that mm. the, these three, uh, I mean, four processes, mm -hmm. they are very key. Okay. At least others can learn, police can also put in place measures to curtail all these uh, Okay, points, so uh, let's wrap up uh, real quick on the SIM fraud thing. So in a summation, mm -hmm. what is the key thing to look out for with regards to you handling your phone? Um, I'm not, I mean, as I said, in the examples I was trying to give, it's not all the time that we check on our phones yeah. to see, what, okay, do I have, um, um, unless maybe you want to go to Instagram, you want to use the internet before you check, you realize that, okay, you don't have a signal. signal yeah. Then probably um, you can't receive text messages or calls. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not that, can we say that some fraud is not too major here in Ghana? Okay, it's, it's because we, are, we don't have the statistics. Okay. These things are happening in the bank. Let me okay. share this with you. Okay. I was once having an awareness session with a bank, mm -hmm. and then someone shared the experience with regards to clone check. Mm -hmm. It happens a number of times in the banks. Okay. They have, it's just that they're reporting. We don't get to hear the Who is media. responsible for that? Who is supposed to uh, gather this know, information? And especially within the banking sector, they're supposed to uh, report to BOG. And BOG wouldn't release that information. Of course, they, they usually report it in their annual reporting, but it doesn't really come into the media as it's supposed to do. 
And also okay. the reporting to the police usually doesn't happen. We mm. keep it to ourselves, and that's okay. that's that's a big problem for us. All right. Thank you very much. So uh, once again, I was joined by Sheriff Isa. He happens to be the uh, information and cybersecurity consultant with Jewels Limited, and of course a member of the IIPGH, who have been gracious for us throughout, giving us uh, resource persons for us to have a very wonderful discussion on anything technology right here on the show. It's Tech Talk, as I said. If you want to know, uh, probably you didn't get enough of what we discussed here, go on to the YouTube page. It's uh, Tech Talk with Diego on YouTube. You can take a listen to all that we've done. You can subscribe also and get to uh, share with others. Also get to know what is happening in the world of technology. Technology is very key and very important. We're moving from uh, the old stage to another technological world. So if you don't jump into the bandwagon, you'll be missing out big time. All right, thank you once again, Sheriff. Welcome. And, uh, okay, so it's a wrap from my side. I'm handing you back to Agnes. And we're going to talk about the song. Over to you.